Welcome to the online worship service of Triumph Lutheran Brethren Church. Triumph is a multi-site church in the Midwest with campuses in Moorhead, Minnesota and West Fargo, North Dakota. Our vision is to see the life and message of Jesus transform hearts, homes, and cities. We're grateful that you've joined us online as the Lord works through our ministry both locally and around the world. Wherever you are at, our prayer is that God would meet you and that the life and message of Jesus would transform your life. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy, which and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it.
One of the ways that we bless children is to tell them good stories. Certainly no one was a better storyteller than Jesus himself. And the beauty of his stories is they are so uh, kind of visual and uh, so, so down to earth. And, and today we are going to take a look at two very brief stories that have a, a powerful message. A powerful message about the, the joy or the satisfaction of uh, finding or discovering something. And I, and I hope that you're encouraged by it today. I'm grateful for Mrs. Wilson. Mrs. Wilson was a volunteer in the church that I grew up in, in southern Minnesota. And uh, she was uh, so kind as to take time every Wednesday afternoon as uh, grade school children would get out of school, we would head over to our church and, uh, and she would, among other things, tell us stories. And not only the stories of Jesus, but she would tell us the stories, true stories, of, uh, of, of Christians that lived for the Lord in their generation. About that time, there was a book that was very uh, significant in the Christian community called Through Gates of Splendor. It was a book about five young men who had taken their families uh, to Ecuador to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to a remote tribe called the Aucas. And uh, what happened was, was really shocking, uh, not only in, in the mission community, but actually it made headlines across the country. As in 1956, these young men who had taken their families uh, to, to be on mission to people who had no idea how much God loved them and what Jesus had done for them, as they were bringing the gospel, there was, there was a terrible moment along the river uh, where these people lived, where, they, where uh, these missionaries actually became martyrs as the people that they sensed God had called them to bring the gospel to actually took their lives. Uh, Jim Elliott was one of those missionaries. He and his wife, Elizabeth, and, and their children uh, uh, had, had gone to Ecuador with some friends from Wheaton College where they had trained to be missionaries. And uh, one of the legacies of Jim Elliott was that in his journal um, that, that he wrote preparing to go on missions, there were a number of things that, that became just unforgettable quotes. And I think today as we look at these parables of Jesus, we can see uh, kind of the richness and, and significance of one of these quotes that, that he had written as he was preparing to bring the gospel uh, to people who, who were lost and had no idea that, that they could be found through faith in Jesus Christ. This is what Jim Elliott wrote. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Well, keep that in mind today as we take a look at the parable of the treasure hidden in the field and the parable of the pearl of great price. These are just two parables, two simple parables, not a lot of detail here to unpack, but there's a wonderful, powerful point about what happens when ordinary people like us discover either by accident or by seeking something more valuable than all they have in terms of what this world has to offer. He's no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. A little background here uh, about um, uh, the time in which Jesus was living and the people with whom he talked to. Jesus' stories were very accessible. They were very relatable to the people that, uh, that heard them. Jesus taught in such a wonderfully down-to-earth way. And so as Jesus is talking about these, these two individuals, one who, who seems to stumble across a treasure as he's working in the field, uh, this is not, and, and, a per, and a pearl merchant, we'll talk about the, the man who's working in the field first. This man is, is doing something very common. People live very close to the soil, and we have no idea uh, the economic status of this man. It really doesn't matter. He is, uh, he is working in a, in a field, and he hears a clunk, perhaps with his hoe, as he discovers a, a, a container that, uh, that inside is this uh, unspeakable treasure. 
and he experiences su- such joy at finding it that he, that he sells all that he has to gather together the resources needed to buy the field because in buying the field, the treasure becomes his. Now, you might think that's kind of an interesting story that he's, he simply finds a treasure in a field. Well, think for a moment about how we grew up with stories of pirates, pirates who, who had a, a treasure chest full of bounty of, uh, of loot, and they would find a place where they, they thought was safe and nobody would know where it was, and they would bury that treasure and, and, uh, for safekeeping, and later they would return and, and dig up that treasure when it was safe to dig it up. Well, Jesus uh, lived in a part of the world then as now, which has is, which is throughout history been very prone to conflict and, and war and strife as, as, as Israel today is, again, beset with, with conflict. And, and, and so in Jesus' day, to tell a story about finding a treasure in the field would not be so odd, actually. When Kathy and I were in Israel uh, several years ago, we stood in, in the... Uh, uh, the place called Megiddo, which is, which is just a little bit south of Nazareth where Jesus grew up, looking over the Jezreel Valley. And that place had been built and destroyed and rebuilt and destroyed and rebuilt 22 times. So you can imagine that, that you were uh, living in, in, in the time of Jesus looking back on a history that when, the, that when enemy troops were starting to advance and, and, and you had valuables that probably more than you could carry or you were leaving in a hurry, what do you do? Well, you don't have a safe deposit box. You don't know what would be safe other than finding a, 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 a place in the ground where somehow you could remember where it was and you would dig and bury a treasure. Well, apparently in the, in the story, uh, Jesus uh, speaks of a man finding one of these treasures that had been buried. Who knows how long? Well, that's not really the point of the story. And, and, uh, and also, you know, when, when we uh, listen to these parables, sometimes we're prone to try to take apart every little word and piece and make it like one big allegory. You know, this isn't a complicated story. There is a point to this story. And the point we see in this, in this first part of, 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 uh, of Jesus' teaching here, the story of the man in the field, is that when he finds this treasure, he is filled with great what? Joy. He is just, a, he is just he's filled with joy. Now, I don't know if he used the Greek word eureka, the word eureka is a cry of joy or satisfaction when one finds or discovers something. Well, he was full of joy. In fact, in order that he might possess what he had found, he gave up what he had that he might possess what he had found because of the great value of what he had found. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. So uh, we find one man uh, uh, making this great discovery that would indeed change his life. There's another aspect of this story, very similar. This is not unusual in in teaching in Jesus' day to tell a story in the form of a couplet or or two stories that basically have the same point. And this too would have been a very accessible story. It's the story of of the pearl merchant who's whose goal in life was to find uh, pearls of great value, maybe buy and sell, but, but as someone who really appreciated the value of a fine pearl, was always on the lookout for that, for that special pearl, that, that rare pearl that was like no other. And again, Jesus uh, hears we're living in a part of the world where we're in the Red Sea, which was just south of Israel, or the Persian Gulf or the Indian Ocean, that pearl diving is an ancient um, uh, craft uh, going down and, and, and finding these beautiful gems inside a, an oyster where, where at, at some point in that oyster's life, an irritant had entered that oyster. And because of that irritation, this could be another whole sermon, right? Out of that irritation, something very valuable develops. And of course, that's how a pearl comes into being. And, uh, and they're also very aware that, that pearls can be very valuable, not only for jewelry, but for decoration. We are told that Cleopatra, the last pharaoh of, of Egypt, 
who, uh, who ruled uh, about 100 years before Jesus would have, would have been speaking this, uh, roughly, uh, that she had in her possession a pearl that today would have been worth literally millions of dollars. Uh, she was a powerful woman, and she had beautiful things, including a pearl of great price. All that to say is that Jesus is now describing the joy of finding something that's, that's, that's more valuable than, than, than anything else you could have in this world. That the things of life that you owned now paled in comparison to what you have discovered. So Jesus tells these two stories. Now these stories have a point, and it's really a, a really a, a, well, basically a point that has two parts to it. One is a discovery is made that elicits or creates great joy. Jesus is saying that the kingdom of God is like making a discovery that creates great joy. And the second part of it is that joy is life-changing. The discoverer lets go of everything that he could possess to possess now what he has discovered. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. How is the kingdom of God like making a discovery that brings such joy that you're willing to give up all you have in order to possess it? I don't know, have you ever experienced joy in terms of finding something? Honestly, in my life, I've never won the lottery, probably because I've never played the lottery. I've, I've never, uh, you know, found a $100 bill laying on the sidewalk. And, you know, we find coins or, or, or whatever. But I have lost things and then found things. And that, fear, uh, that, that feeling of eureka, I found it, might be similar. Maybe you can relate to it. Uh, I haven't done that for like maybe a week. Last week, uh, Kathy and I were, are, are in the midst of a, of a house project, and, and so I got in the pickup and drove over to, to my neighborhood store. I lived not far from Menards and picked up some things and, 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 and got home and was excited to get started and put down my wallet and my keys and my phone. My phone. I started to do the pat down. You probably know what this is like. Like, okay, so like, where did I put my phone? Oh, I must have left it in the pickup. So I went out and looked in the console where I keep my phone, and it wasn't there. And, and, and maybe you know this feeling too. I started to get a little panicky to think that I may have lost my phone. Now, I, I figured it probably would have been in, back at the store, but that's a very public pl place. And, and I thought, oh, who could have gone through the line? So I, I got in my truck and I drove over. And maybe you do this too. What was I doing as I was driving over? Praying. I was, seriously, I'm praying. And, and, and God uh, invites us to, to kind of let him know what's on our heart. Well, on my heart was I had lost my phone. So I'm letting him know about that. He already knew about that. But, but anyway, so, so I pull into the parking lot and I go in and the doors open up and I go in. I look down the many uh, uh, checkout lanes and I think, and I, think I, I was at that checkout lane and oh, I recognize that girl. And sure enough, I, I came up and she looked at me and smiled. And she says, you're looking for your phone? And oh, Oh, I was relieved. And she pointed me to the service counter and I went to the service counter. Another nice gal says, so looking for your phone, does it have a national park sticker on the back? I say, yeah, it does, Yosemite. And she smiled and, and gave me my phone and, and all was well with the world because I, I had my phone back. Experiencing joy, something lost had been found. You know, that kind of experience on a much more significant level is... is, is, is a way of understanding what happens when we as God's children who in various forms are lost in our sin come to know the one who loves us more than we know, who did more than we can imagine that we might be brought into relationship with him. The kingdom of God is about a benevolent, kind, powerful king who rather than treat people like us according to how our sins deserve, has chosen to treat us according to the riches of his kindness in Jesus. It's when ordinary people who are, who are living in this world come to know their creator. They come to know the one who, who made them for this life and, 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 and who desires nothing more than we come into relationship with him, in fellowship with him, knowledge of him, come to know his love and experience the privilege of loving him back. 
Jesus uses this, this reunion, this reconciliation, this coming together uh, uh, between our Father in heaven and, the, and, and those of us as his children who, who, who come to enjoy what it means to be in his family. The, the King of heaven who gives us the pleasure and, and the joy and the honor of living under the rule and reign of the one who knows us best and yet and loves us most. Most. I'm just going to quickly refer, uh, refer to Luke chapter 15. There's, um, there's uh, three stories in Luke chapter 15 that kind of give us, not kind of, they do give us the sense of the joy of discovery, of being found. Jesus told this story because people were curious as to why he spent his time with the kind of people that he did. They muttered, we are told in, in Luke 15, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And Jesus explained what's going on when he, the king of heaven, who has laid aside his glory, has come to earth and he's spending time with people who were looked down upon by many. And Jesus told this story. He said, suppose that you're a shepherd and you, and you have a flock of a hundred, but you're missing one. And so you leave the flock in a safe place and you go searching after that one. And suppose you hear the bleeding of your lost sheep and you follow that noise and you find this sheep. And, and, and Jesus says, that this is what it's like when that happens. He says, suppose one of you uh, has a hundred sheep, loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And Jesus said, and when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and he goes home and calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. Jesus said, I tell you in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who de did not need to repent. Now we're just using uh, that as an example. We aren't gonna unpack that, but notice this. When the shepherd is reunited with his sheep, there is great joy. Jesus uses another picture. Uh, it's called the parable of the last coin. In Jesus' day, a young bride would have this, this uh, headband of, of, of coins that were part of her, her uh, bridal dowry. And imagine a, a young bride loses one of these precious coins. Well, we're told uh, here, Jesus said, or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and carefully search until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me, joy. I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. What follows, Jesus doesn't use just two examples to make his point here. He actually uses three and he tells probably one of the most uh, familiar and moving uh, parables that Jesus ever told. And it, was, and it was the parable of the lost son and the waiting father. We often call this the story of the prodigal son. A young man who, who had no time for staying home with his, with his father. He asked for his inheritance. He takes his inheritance, goes into a far country and squanders it, embarrassing his family. And, and, and when he's there, he comes to his senses and realizes again, remembers the goodness of his father, wondering if there's any hope coming home that he will even be accepted again, going to go home to, to volunteer to be a laborer for his dad. This young man heads home, and we pick up the story in, in, Genesis, in uh, Luke 15, verse 20. He, he got up and went to his father, and while he was still a long way away, his father saw him, was filled with compassion, ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him, Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate for the son of mine was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and he is found. So they began to celebrate. Okay, granted, these are stories of joy when, when, uh, when God in these stories is either the shepherd or actually the bride searching for the coin or the father waiting for his son. And when that reunion happens, there's great joy. Jesus says, actually, when, when one of us, who may be out of fellowship with our heavenly father, 
discovers the invitation, the gospel invitation, that it is possible to come to God based on what Jesus has done. It is possible to come to God based on what Jesus has done. And although we may feel, rightly so, that we don't deserve to be in relationship with him out of his great love for us, he sent his son to pay the penalty for our sin, to become the way that you and I can find ourselves back in fellowship with our Father. And that's exactly what the kingdom of God is about today. Bringing people back into fellowship with their heavenly Father that, may, that they might know him, that they might experience the joy of forgiveness, the security of knowing that, that our future is certain because Jesus not only died for our sins, but he rose from the dead. And that we live under his protection from the enemy in this broken world. We live receiving his provision, he who takes care of us. And, and, and also that we live just buoyed up and encouraged by his promises. You see, the, the joy of the, of, of, of the kingdom of heaven is rooted in the character of the king himself. What he has done for us. So when Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a man who discovers treasure and gives up all that he has that he might have that treasure, there's nothing in this life that is worth more than a relationship with a God who created you to know him and enjoy him forever. God has made that possible through the gospel, the good news of what Jesus has done for us. And when we turn our hearts towards him, and, and, and we understand that, that that act of incredible kindness and mercy and grace, he who could have treated us like the prodigal son a, a, as we deserve, we are not worthy. But he says, that's not the point. I love you. Welcome home. Your sins are forgiven. Jesus says that's the source of great joy, like a, like a man who finds a treasure in a field, like a per, like we, 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 could not, we could never earn this. It's priceless, like the pearl of great price. And yet when we come to know the love of God, we discover something that gives us, again, the, the, the secret, the understanding of why we're even here on this planet. We were here on this planet to know the love of God, to rejoice in the love of God, to turn from our sin and our selfish and our self-centered ways and, uh, and, and, and trust him, trust him with our very lives. Now, why doesn't everybody do that? That's a really good question. You know, Jesus answered that question too, and, and he didn't do it with, with, with a story per se of a, a, an illustration or a, or a visual story like, like these five parables we looked at this morning, uh, the parables of finding uh, the, the kingdom of God, the the treasure buried in the field and the pearl of great price or, or the joy in heaven when people like us are found like the shepherd or the woman looking for her coin or the waiting father. Jesus actually had an encounter with a young man that's recorded in Mark 10. And, and with this, we, we close this morning. There was a young man um, who, who was really intrigued by Jesus. We find his story recorded for us in Mark chapter 10. And we call it the story of the rich young ruler who was, who was very uh, literate and aware of all of, all of the, um, uh, well, well, the law of God. And, and he had done his best to keep the law of God. Now, this was all going on in, in kind of managing this wealth of, of religious teaching in his head. But Jesus, when he saw this man seeking, Jesus was, was willing to really give him what he was longing for. This man realized there was something more than, than being religious, than rule-keeping. And, and, uh, and Jesus said he looked at this man who had his, his T's crossed and his I's dotted in terms of his knowledge of the law. Jesus looked at him, and it says, Jesus looked at him and loved him in Mark 10, 21. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell, we read. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples how hard it is for the rich 
to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, this is a parable with a, this is a rich, uh, not rich parable, this is a rich episode in Jesus' ministry that tells us much about, about uh, uh, the pull of the world on our lives, the things of this world, and, and, and the enemy of our souls gives us, a, unfortunately, a, an inaccurate sense of what really matters and what's really valuable. And we can go chasing after the brass ring, so to speak, in this world and, and find ourselves at the end of the journey with nothing but stuff and eternity before us. That young missionary, Jim Elliott, who at the age of 28, died at the hand, hands of those that he had been motivated to, to come and, 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 and share with them the love of God in Christ Jesus. He went into the presence of his Savior, welcomed into his heavenly home as a faithful man. He had lost literally everything, and yet look at what he had gained. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Okay, I said that was where we we're going to land the plane, but one more thought. This beautiful interaction between the King of Heaven, God the Father, and, 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 and His Son, Jesus, seated at His side, sending out His Holy Spirit to seek and save today those who are lost, to bring us back into fellowship. In the story, we think of the, of the man working in the field or the pearl merchant giving up all in order to possess what they saw was of great value and brought them great joy. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12, it says that Jesus endured the cross, scorning its shame because of the joy set before him. Man, talk about giving up that what was his for another in order that we might experience the joy of being reunited and back in fellowship with God. Jesus gave all that we might receive that which we could never earn but which our Heavenly Father desires that we possess. He will not force any of us. There are many who, like the rich young ruler, said, no, thank you. Uh, the things of this world are more important to me than the promises of God. Are they? Are they? Let's close with, with these three thoughts. Maybe this morning you're, you're in one of those moments is like the clunk of a hole on a treasure chest. Do you mean God loves me that much? Do you mean in spite of what I've done and God could treat me according to what I deserve, but he's going to treat me according to his love for me? Jesus died for my sins so that I don't have to worry about, about coming home to the Father and he'll receive me. The, the kingdom of God, I can, I, as I give him my life, he will invite me into his. I can have this relationship with God. If no one's ever shared that with you, or maybe they have, but today you're ready to receive it. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, it brings the angel of, angels in heaven no greater joy than to see people like you and me discover the grace of God, the love of God, the life that you were created for, that Jesus died so that you can have, not just now, but eternally. That's something to think about, isn't it? Or maybe you've known this. In fact, you've come into a relationship with God, but maybe the things of the world have been, been, been pulling at you and pulling at you and pulling at you. And really, you've kinda, you kind of, you, you feel conflicted. Let's remember today that there is no greater joy than turning from those things that would want to have our hearts and entrusting our heart to the one who gave all that we might have him. King David went through a really dark period in his life. And he turned back for the sense of reunion and being reunited and at peace with God again after, after committing great sin. And you know what he prayed? Lord, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Remind me again that in spite of my sin, you came as my, as my God, as my King, that I might know you and serve you. I need you to forgive me for, for, for going after my own desires and, and suffering for that, and I should have. I would like to turn from those and come back to you. What is so valuable about the kingdom of heaven? Why is it such a source of great joy? 
That joy is rooted in the character of the king. What he has done for us, what he has done for you. May God give you grace to see the gospel, the good news of Jesus for what it is, to embrace it, to gladly possess it, and to thank God for it. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Amen. Hey, I'm Pastor Doug, and I want to take a minute and, and say thank you for watching the worship service today. If you'd like to extend your time of worship, we have a couple links to worship songs that fit today's message in the description down below. And simply click and you can spend more time with Jesus in your day today. I have three quick thoughts that I wanted to share with you and it'll only take a minute. First, we'd love to connect with you. If you'd be willing, you can visit our website at triumphlbc.org connect and let us know how we can reach you or you can visit triumphlbc.org slash events to find an activity that you could jump into. Second, we hope that you see this content as a supplement to your walk with Jesus. Our digital content really isn't designed to replace belonging and engaging with a gospel community. So whether that's here at Triumph or at another church, we invite you to find a community that you can connect with. And third, we invest a lot of resources into producing content that's used to bless people just like you all over our community. If this or any of the other resources we have here at Triumph have blessed you, would, would you consider giving? It's because of your generosity that we are able to continue creating and serving online.